how we do it and how to identify an exam. Now here you can see this needle is inserted at right angle to the incision. Right angle. It is going to pierce the edge and after that it is going to pierce the second edge and again it comes at right angle. So what is this? It is going to pierce the skin of incision at right angle, going to traverse both the edges and it is coming out or it is going to exit again at the right angle. Clear? And when we are going to come out, we are going to apply the knots. Clear? So can you see here? Needle is inserted at right angle to the incision, traverses both of the edges and then exit again at the right angle. So if you see, this is the skin incision. Clear? Now, I'm going to pierce it at right angle, clear? And again, this needle is going to pierce, pierce, and then it is going to come out at right angle. And after that, the knots are applied, clear? So this is simple interrupted suture. So here, needle is inserted at right angle to the incision, inserted at right angle to incision. Then it traverses or pass through, pass through both edges of wound. So it passed through both edges of wood and then exit again at right angle. Okay. So this is simple interrupted suture. Now see the continuous suture. What we do in this case? So the name is continuous. So here the first suture is just like simple interrupted suture. Okay. And rest of the sutures are taken continuously until the far end is reached. Have a look. So here. I am going to take the first suture which is simple interrupted clear and after that what I am going to apply it like this so can you see rest of the sutures are applied continuously so here it's like this so the rest of sutures are applied continuously until the far end is reached and when the far end is reached we are going to tie the far end by able D knot so how it looks like so see this continuous suture here the first suture is like simple interrupted suture and then you can see I am going to take the suture can you see and the suture is being taken continuously until the far end is reached and when we are reaching the far end here we are going to tie the knot or secure the knot with a body knot clear so what's running this continuous suture here the first suture this is identical to simple interrupted suture clear and rest sutures are continuous rest of sutures these are taken continuous until the far end is reached clear and the far end is secured with a body knot so far end this is secured with it is secured with a body knot clear so what happens here you can see this is a body knot and what we do in this a body knot here you can see we tie so here we are going to tie free end to the loop of last suture so tie free end you can see here free end to the loop of last suture And what is the example you have seen in laboratory when we are suturing the rectus sheet with the proline? Generally, we take the continuous suture. Now, third is mattress suture. Mattress suture. Okay. These are frequently asked nowadays, especially in neat and hips. See, sometimes because of trauma or because of musculoskeletal trauma or soft tissue injury is there, and what happens? The wound edges are not approximated. Clear? Yeah? And it's difficult to approximate the wound edges because these are irregular. So whenever there is irregularity in depth or disposition of wound edges and we have to approximate it, we can use the mattress suture. If we have to invert or evert the edges, we use the mattress suture. Okay. So what is the use of mattress sutures? So it is used for eversion or inversion. Eversion or inversion of wound edges. Clear? Yeah? And it helps in accurate approximation of wound edges. So it helps in accurate approximation of wound edges and especially for which wound edges the wound edges which are which are irregular in depth or disposition so for which wound edges which are irregular in depth or disposition now two types of mattress are there one is horizontal mattress and the second is vertical mattress okay it's very very easy to remember and it's very easy to differentiate now if you see the first one is horizontal mattress and the second is vertical mattress okay what's the difference see this is horizontal mattress right and this is the vertical mattress now see how we are going to take the horizontal mattress first, right? Now see, I'm going to pierce the skin edges here like this at right angle. So generally the initial suture is taken as a simple interrupted suture. So what? The needle is going to pierce both of the skin edges at right angle. Now when this is taken out, can you see here when it's taken out, this needle moves horizontally, can you see? And again, it is going to pierce the wound edges, clear? And then knots are tied. So here, needle moves horizontally and traverses both edges of the wound again. So since it is traversing, horizontally this is horizontal mattress and what happens in vertical mattress can you see here i'm going to pierce the both 
edges of wood at right angle just like simple interrupted suture and then you can see the needle moves vertical and again it is going to pierce both edges of the wood so here the needle moves vertically so this is vertical matrix right so first is horizontal matrix and second is vertical here in both initial suture it's like or it's made like simple interrupted suture clear in horizontal matrix needle moves horizontally needle can you see here needle moves horizontally in vertical matrix can you see it moves vertically so needle moves horizontally in horizontal in horizontal matrix and in vertical matrix it is going to move vertically and then again traverses both edges of wood again so here it traverses both edges both edges of wood again so this is horizontal matrix and vertical matrix. Now easiest method how you can identify or crack the question easily in exam if it's an image based question. You can see this is the line of incision. This is the line of incision. And if you see the horizontal matrix in horizontal matrix, yes, it is parallel to line of incision. So in horizontal matrix, the suture is parallel to line of incision. And if you see the line of incision in vertical matrix, it is perpendicular to the line of incision. So this is how you can easily identify the horizontal and vertical matrix. So now see how we take horizontal matrix. Can you see the needle is going to pierce the both edges of the wound? Clear? So just like interrupted suture. Now can you see the needle moves horizontally? And if needle moves horizontally, and I'm going to tie the knot, this is horizontal matrix. And see if the needle is going to move vertically. Here can you see the needle is going to move vertically. So this is vertical matrix. Now see subcuticular suture. Subcuticular suture. Now in this image, can you see? You can see only the ends. The rest of the suture, can you see? The rest of the suture is buried under the skin. So this is subcuticular suturing. And we discussed that for this subcuticular suturing, which suture is used? It's monocryl or polyglycoprol. What is the advantage of this subcuticular suturing? That there is no scar. Clear? So generally, this subcuticular suturing or subcuticular suture is used for cosmetic areas. Right? So the most commonly used suture is the monocryl, also known as polyglycoprol. Clear? And it is specially used in the skin where cosmetic appearance is important. Cosmetic appearance is important. Okay, what is the prerequisite here? That here the edges should be approximated. So the skin edges should be approximated, then only we are going to take the subcuticular suture. Now see this image. What kind of wound is here? Can you see? There is a circular wound. Can you see? There is a circular wound. And if you see the suture, you can see that here the suture is applied parallel to edges of the circular wound. So when the suture is applied parallel to the edges of circular wound and when you are going to tie it, it is just like purse string. So this is known as purse string suture. You have seen the purses basically which are which were distributed in 90s, especially in the marriages, red colored purse and there was a string like this. So this is what purse string suture. Clear? So here you noticed what is done basically in a circular wound. In a circular wound, the suture is applied parallel to the edges of wound, parallel to edges, clear? Now what is the use of this purse string suture? We discussed in hernia surgery, when we, we were performing herniotomy, we were taking the purse string suture and then only, can you see, this was the sac and we were applying purse string suture like this and then we were excising the sac, redundant sac. Second, in appendectomy also we take purse string suture. So in surgery, what is the role of purse string suture? It is used in herniotomy or hernia surgery and second, it is used in appendectomy. So these are the important types of suturing techniques. Now what are the guidelines for day of suture removal? Means on which particular day sutures should be removed, it varies from one side to another. Clear? So see, see the area and day of suture removal. Day of suture removal. Clear? So in eyelids and lip, generally the suture should be removed on third to fourth day. So eyelids and lip, it is removed on third to fourth day right now in eyebrows and nose it should be removed on third to fifth day eyebrows and nose it should be removed on third to fifth day clear and if you see the rest of face excluding ear the rest of face excluding ear generally the suture should be removed on third to fourth day so rest of face three to four days Clear? So roughly what you noticed that generally in phase we are supposed to remove the sutures on 3rd to 4th day excluding ear. In ears we are going to remove the sutures on 10 to 12th day. Now see in scalp 
The sutures are removed on 6 to 8th day. So it should be removed between 6 to 8 days. Similarly, in chest and abdomen, 8 to 10 days. So chest and abdomen, it should be removed in 8 to 10 days. Okay. And if you are talking about ear and hand, and see in ear and hand, the sutures are removed in 10 to 14 days. Right? So in ear and hand, the sutures are removed in 10 to 14 days. Here. And if you see back extremities, foot and sole. In back extremities, foot and sole, here the sutures are removed in 12 to 14 days. Right? So back extremities, foot and sole. Here we remove the sutures in 12 to 14 days. Clear? Now how you can remember it easily? We discussed that face related area. Okay? Except ears. Clear? So in face, generally the sutures are removed in 4 days. So broadly, we are removing the sutures in 4 days. Okay? In scalp, in chest and abdomen, it is removed in 8 days broadly. So how to remember 4 into 2. So in scalp, chest and abdomen, it is 4 into 2, 8 days. So here, it is 4 into 2. Okay? And in the rest of the regions, can you see? In ear, hand, back, extremities, foot and sole, it is 4 into 3. And what? 12 days. Okay? So this is the easiest way to remember. Now we are going to discuss the bowel anastomosis. But before discussing bowel anastomosis, I want to tell you the layer.